So hello everyone, we are from Silicon Jelly, it's a Czech indie game studio from Prague. We are working on free games titles parallel, but today we want to present you our first game, it's called Click and Gun. I will show you a small trailer. Thanks. So as you can see on the video, this is an action tower defense game. Uh, that means that uh, you are modern exterminator and your goal is to save the world again. <laughs> because the world is infected by these uh, bugs and, and some creatures and you have to kill them all. So what's unique about this game? Uh, this game has uh, some uh, unique visuals representation, which is combination of 2D and 3D, because the 2D is uh, uh, hand-painted uh, backgrounds, and 3D uh, is uh, all the enemies and everything else. So this is some, some statistics. OK, this game is primarily uh, developed for iOS. And it's only one binary, and it runs smoothly on 3GS, iPad 1, and also it looks look good on the Retina display. And that, that was our big, biggest challenge. So what would we talk about today? About how to manage a little uh, team like us, because we, we are only free. Uh, we will talk about the asset creation, that means how the assets were done, how we converted these assets into 3D, and then we will talk more about the technical stuff. That means about dynamic batching, lighting workflow, using uh, vertex, vertex uh, colors for lights, and uh, how we manage to have day and night uh, light cycles with light probes, and some GFX optimization tricks. So about our team, we are just three members, or we were. I'm the developer and team leader of this uh, indie studio. Uh, this is illustrator Jakub. He's the main artist. And uh, our third artist wasn't, is not here. The audio was done uh, by, by our studio and we grow to seven members and we hired uh, one member which uh, was working in Bo Bohemia Interactive which you maybe know from Arma 2 and DayZ mods and so on so this guy is now making for us the game design so what's about uh, when you have a small team you have to plan everything you can't waste time because you have limited resources so we have to firstly prototype the game mechanics, uh, how is the game feeling before you ever uh, want to do any graphical stuff. You have to prototype and make some uh, jumping boxes and you know this kind of stuff. Then you have to test the game mechanics. On the paper you can 
uh, scribble your, your uh, data and values uh, about the enemies and what's, what, what is the best thing to get uh, the best gameplay. And of course, you have to benchmark the visuals. That's the most important part, because when you have imagination about how to do something, you have to try it before, you, before the actual development, because you will always have some boundaries uh, when you are target, targeting on uh, lower, lower end uh, platforms. You have to know what you can achieve. So these all tips can make a huge difference in the final result. And I will give a talk to our artists. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for coming. I'm so excited. It's my first time on Unite. It's so good atmosphere here. Thank you very much for all of you. Uh, uh, I'm not a developer. I don't work in Unity, but uh, I'm illustrator and uh, I would like to quickly show you how, how we uh, get things done before we are put them into Unity. So uh, as you can see behind me, uh, we have a lot of bugs in our games. And uh, I choose one, my favorite, to show you the quick workflow. I, I, I love spiders. So uh, I choose spider. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, we need to gather uh, references. So uh, we look at so many references as we can. And I, am, I can tell you it was kind of creepy work. I saw spiders everywhere. And uh, then we uh, make some sketches. So uh, we create uh, several sketches. And in this point, uh, we start creating our own, uh, not bugs, but uh, arachnides, or some type of bugs, not exactly the same. but. Uh, if, if you uh, need a spider, you know it must have four legs, but you can choose another style. So for example, we put some uh, skulls on his back. And after we have these sketches, we put them together and pass them uh, to our 3D guy. And he makes uh, this uh, 3D low poly model. And after that, he supplies with it unwrap map. So, uh, I can make some textures for, uh, for the model. And again, I passed it to him, and he created this uh, 3D spider. We have uh, around 20 bugs or creatures. Create this, this uh, style is really quickly. And you can uh, change the texture. And it looks like different bug or creature, but the model is the same. So it's really quickly. And then uh, through our game, uh, you visit several locations, uh, like London, China, and New York. And uh, I would like, again, show you uh, some quick workflow uh, of how we create this map. So first of all, we choose location uh, unique in some way. So I would like to uh, show you uh, on Paris. So uh, it's, it's nearly the same like with the bugs. We collect references, then uh, make several sketches, details, and, uh, or a bigger parts, and then connect them to the, together. And uh, this is final illustration. And this is the point uh, when we uh, find unity. We find the unity engine. And this point, we uh, find out. Uh, many opportunities that Unity brings to us. And we decide that it's better for us to create 3D model than use just this 2D illustration. So uh, our goal was create from this uh, 2D illustration the 3D without losing the effect and atmosphere of uh, illustration. So uh, we created this. Uh, this wireframe, and what we need is uh, put the illustration of the wireframe. So uh, in order to uh, get wireframe, uh, we must uh, uh, put the illustration and, uh, on, on the wireframe and, sh and shape it. So at the end, we end up with this. This is the 3D, uh, 3D model. And 
if you look from another, another angle, you see that it's like a theater stage. And uh, you can see the 3D, but the angle is limited. But for our reason, uh, it was absolutely fine. You can uh, create it more, uh, more into space. So uh, there you can see uh, on the right is illustration, and on the left is 3D model. So thank you very much. I think that the result is pretty awesome. <laughs> but we will talk about the technical stuff, how to achieve this and have everything smooth as possible. So static and dynamic batching. Uh, as you know, you have to uh, combine all the geometry and use only one texture or texture atlas to have uh, the possibilities to batch everything. Because our scene is rendered, uh, the whole scene is rendered, and there are, there are no reasons to use occlusion culling or, or th this kind of stuff. We have to achieve a low memory footprint, uh, minimal overdraw, and this kind of stuff. So uh, the reason was to achieve like a really hard compression ratios, but uh, to uh, maintain the original quality, which was quite hard, but we managed that. So the scene I is like taking 40 max on the iPad 1, and it's running smoothly, and the uh, iOS is never killing the app during the gameplay, which is absolutely crucial for us. And we were like really crazy because, you know, iPad 1 is su such a bad product. <laughs> OK, so this is how the textures look like. Uh, this is, I think this is a rough sketch uh, of the, of the uh, texture atlas, because uh, in the final stage, it is more shrink down, and there are no empty pixels, and so on. So, but the most important thing, as you can see, we, were, we have uh, the day and night cycle how to achieve this and don't use dynamic lights. Uh, because we tried to use dynamic lights and we failed because dynamic lights on the low-end devices just can do the, the right job. So we have to use another solution. That solution was baking light data into vertex colors because we are not using these data uh, for anything else. Why don't we use this for, for the uh, lighting? So uh, we wanted to use the internal uh, beast, but I don't know if it's, if it's possible to bake uh, vertex colors in beast because we were using Unity 3.5. So we have to use another, another uh, third parties like 3D Max. You can use Maya or Lightwave, any, any program which has like some better render techniques and render supports. And uh, you can uh, paint the lights uh, with a brush, because uh, these programs already have uh, vertex paint support. And uh, I think that there are some uh, Unity plugins for this kind of stuff. So I think that the process can be much more effective. And for the, for the moving objects, we uh, use LightRows. OK, so we don't have to use light maps, because light maps are quite big, and they uh, spend uh, uh, memory and uh, so on. And we really don't need them, because our scene is not realistic. So we just faked everything in this scene. OK, so this is the process, how to bake uh, uh, vertex data in 3D Max. Uh, the most important thing in our workflow was to separate the day and night lightning into light groups, which is just grouping these, these uh, light gizmos. And there, there uh, we are selecting the night lights.
this process is uh, automated. That means that you are just selecting the, the lights you need, then hit uh, bake, and you have everything done. It takes just like uh, one second to do this. Of course, you have to prepare the, all the lightning, but 3D Max is capable to do this in real time to show you how the scene will look like. And uh, the best thing about this is that the, what you see in the, in the viewport in 3D Max, you will see it in Unity the same way. So we, have, we haven't any problem with that. OK, so this is Unity. This is how our scenes look like. There you can see some uh, green gizmos. That's our uh, pathfinding solution. And uh, the vertex data are in separate FBX. So we have a static FBX with the whole scene. And we are just changing the FBX uh, during runtime and applying static batching on that. So, and the, the biggest problem was the transition, because you can't actually, or I don't know how to interpolate these uh, light probes and geometry data uh, from one to second stage, which maybe is possible, but in our short time, it, this was the most easiest solution to make a fade out transition. OK, so about the light probes. Uh, as I said before, you can create any, any light probes uh, setups, and then you can change them at runtime, which is a nice feature because you don't have to load another level or do some really uh, long-term operation to just get a different mood for the scene. So, and the, the pros for the light probes are that it's fast, and the conclusions are that uh, we can actually interpolate between these light probe stages. So, we use the transition. OK, this is the process of, of uh, how our light probes looks in the scenes. So you can see that we have, we have fake lights in the scene, which are not affecting uh, the actual, actual scene data. But it's just to interpret where's the light and where's not for the actual uh, dynamic, dynamic models. Because uh, I think that th this is interesting, because you can create absolutely fake world and uh, it, it doesn't have to be uh, physically correct, the lightning. You don't have to use the, the beast for using actual data for light maps and everything. And you can have like sur sur surrealistic world, but use the light probes uh, for, for the dynamic models. OK, so texture compression trick. Uh, I don't know if uh, anyone f uh, have problems with texture compressions because it's quite uh, quite uh, destructive when you when you uh, apply really really high compressions on your textures, which is absolutely uh, crucial for for the memory for footprint and uh, the performance. So how to get like uh, gradients and nice crisp uh, images? The solution is differing. You can use it in Photoshop or any different, uh, different program. You just apply a slight noise, like 20 or 30% on your image. And then when you are using PVRTC uh, compression, the result is much more better. So th there is the com comparison. So we can co compare that. This is a 16-bit file. You can see the posterization and, and all the artif artifacts. When you use dithering, it's much more nicer. And then on the PVRTC, there are mostly no artifacts. So 
uh, all all this, all uh, images in our game are compressed with PVRTC 4 bit, and the main character can be compressed as a PVRTC 2 bit because uh, he has a much more small uh, color range and color space. Okay, so what's next? Uh, the second biggest issue is uh, fill rate and how to avoid fill rate. Um, the biggest problem with fill rate is when you are using transparent objects and they are overlapping, it causes on iOS a really huge uh, performance issues and you have to solve this. So what's the solution? You can uh, transform your geometry and create like uh, outlines with the geometry to reduce the, the size of the, of the transparent areas. And this can really help uh, for optimization the, the whole scene. When you have hard edged objects, you can uh, achieve the full, full uh, cutout effect with only geometry and don't use uh, transparent transparency at all, which is much more cheaper. Uh, especially for power VR, power VR uh, processors. So this is this is like yeah, power VR is optimized for really big data, but not for for alpha blending. So this is uh, just just a thumbnail of uh, how you can shrink the data. This can be uh, achieved with a with a big billboard. But the, but the billboard will actually uh, have some overhead because he's uh, counting all, all the edges and everything, which is not so important. And when you create something like cage around this with, with your geometry, uh, there is no overhead that you spend like three or five more polygons than a, and then a single billboard, but it's a better result for the performance that you are not, not having a large area, transparent areas. <laughs> so this is all. And I really thank you for uh, your time. And don't hesitate to ask you any question. So are there any questions? Nope. <laughs> cool. OK. Thanks. So yeah, thanks. One here. Oh, there's. Hi. Um, Hi. I was wondering with regards to the last thing that you actually just said about alpha blending being more expensive than uh, higher res geometry. Um, did you find that that was the same across all the devices? So for example, what we found in one of our games is that the 3GS was particularly slow with pushing uh, data to the, the GPU. Mm -hmm. So more vertices was a potentially worse for us than alpha mm -hmm. blending. Did you find something similar? Uh, I was uh, testing mainly on the iPad, iPad 1 because uh, this game is really the, be the best experience from this game is on iPad 1. And of course, we tested it on 3GS and, and this uh, kind of low-end devices. So I don't really know uh, uh, the difference between uh, the 3GS, but I know that on iPad 1, we have this problem. And I think that it, it's the, the resolution of the screen and so on. So maybe uh, in some cases, it can be uh, different. But you have to test it because it's it's problem that you have variety of uh, different different devices and every everything is behaving different. So cool, thanks. There is one. Hi. Uh, do you have a release date for your game? Yeah, we have release date, and it will be the end of this month. So yeah, but but you can download the light version. On the App Store is a uh, light version of, yeah. of this, so you can try. You can uh, take a look and wait. For and the light yeah. version has only one level, and uh, it was just that we want tested if anyone wants to play this. Yeah, 
because uh, we don't uh, we just released alpha version and we don't tell anybody hey th there is the game but we have like f uh, our 50,000 uh, downloads uh, after two days and nobody knows that it existed so we decided that, that it is maybe possible to uh, make this game to the final stage okay <laughs> So how many frames per second do you achieve? Uh, on the iPad uh, 1, we have 30 frames per second. On the 3GS, we have around 25 and 30 frames per second. And all other devices are really like 60 and so on. So we are quite happy. Ah, there's a question. So I'm sorry, I came a little bit late. What software do you use? Uh, software for the 3D modeling. Uh, mainly, yeah, 3D modeling. Yeah, 3D Max, uh, 2011, yeah. Thank you. OK. Hi there. I was curious what type of uh, light mapping software you ended up using for um yeah, here. Over here? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Look at the other way. Um, you talked about you didn't use Beast as your solution for your light mapping. Uh, yeah. can, did you guys use an off-the-shelf solution that was built into Unity for this, or did you use something else? Uh, can you repeat the question, just the end part? Did you, what did you use other than, since you didn't use Beast for your, for, your vertex learning? colors baking, yeah. You just, you, so did you get an off-the-shelf solution uh, uh, from we, the asset store? Or? No, we used uh, 3D Max for, for baking vertex colors. OK, yeah. and then internal to Unity, you, used, uh, you just wrote your own shader? I don't really know. But I, I think that there's some plugin solution. And we didn't try, because we know that 3D Max is absolutely uh, super, superb. Uh, and, and it supports also global illumination. And, and it's really robust. Yeah, because we know that plugins uh, in, in uh, Asset Store, uh, these kind of types, they're sometimes quite laggy and so on. So we use 3D Max, which is absolutely perfect for this solution. Cool, yeah. thanks. Uh, over here. There. Over here. Uh, can you expand a little bit more on uh, using noise to, uh, to reduce uh, compression artifacts? Because uh, you pretty much just blew my mind. Yeah, uh, I, can, I can show you if you want. <laughs> just run Photoshop or GIMP or any, uh, any different uh, program. Mm -hmm. Then you load, load the image desired or the whole texture atlas. And then you just uh, create an empty layer. You fill the empty layer with 50% gray. Then you apply noise. And then we just use soft light for this and turn down the opacity. And uh, around 30%, which is not uh, that anybody can see this, but uh, it really helps improve the compression quality, especially for the PVRTC. Because uh, I don't know how the algorithm works, but uh, it uses like when when he sees like fills, it's doing some some really tricky stuff with with uh, fills or smooth gradients, and then when you apply this noise, it will tell I think the algorithm to do it some in in other, another way that there are some details so. I think that that's the reason why it's my, maybe better when you use this. OK. Um, for the alpha blending problem, which is a huge problem in PowerVR hardware, um, have you ever considered in huge objects that uses the alpha blending shader to build just the border of these objects using an alpha shader so the fill rate will be yeah. uh, we are using this trick. You, you are yeah, using, we are so using the, this trick. So the solid part of the object can be just a non-transparent yeah. object, so it will not impact that yeah. fill rate at all? That's what, that was the solution uh, how to achieve the frame rate. 
So everything which is uh, fill, it's a uh, it has a normal shader like uh, just uh, vertex, vertex colors. Okay. And for the edges, when you want uh, that it, it will it will be not uh, like aliased and so on, you can use the transparency. So yeah, that's the solution. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I guess that's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very so much. We thank you very much. <laughs>